A glass of cold water that meets strict drinking water standards for quality. It should be the right of every man, woman, and child on earth, right? But you'd be amazed to know just how much work goes into making sure that this simple pleasure, this essential component of your daily life and well-being, is available to you every time you turn on a faucet. I'm Jeff Sabo, Chief Executive Officer of the Suffolk County Water Authority, which provides drinking water to 1.2 million residents of Suffolk County, New York. It's our job to retrieve groundwater from Long Island's vast underground aquifer system, test it exhaustively to make sure it's safe, remove any contaminants that are found, and deliver a drinking water supply that meets or surpasses rigorous state and federal regulations through a network of more than 6,000 miles of water main. This may not be something you spend a lot of time thinking about, but with the country's drinking water supply, whether it originates from groundwater or surface water, under increasing threat from a wide range of contaminants, it's time we all learn a lot more about this incredible natural resource and how to protect it. The story of our drinking water begins with the water cycle that continuously replenishes the sole source aquifer beneath our feet. The biggest such aquifer in the country, with tens of trillions of gallons of water stored in multiple layers at any given time. Ty Fuller is our lead hydrogeologist and an expert on the aquifer system. Ty, can you talk a little bit about how the water cycle replenishes our sole source aquifer? Absolutely, Jeff. When you look at the uh, water cycle process, you can start with any of the three steps, but I'll start with evaporation. Evaporation, it's the process by which liquid water evaporates into water vapor. So water, uh, for instance, will evaporate off oceans and ascend into the sky as water vapor. The water vapor cools and condenses, and that second step is to form clouds. The third step, precipitation, it occurs when water from clouds returns to the earth in the form of either rain or snow. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the gist of it. Could you explain how this connects to our sole source aquifer system? Uh, sure thing, Jeff. Uh, precipitation, uh, somewhere along the lines of about 800 billion gallons a year in Long Island, uh, it infiltrates the groundwater surface and percolates deep under the ground into the three primary aquifers that make up Long Island's sole source aquifer. The aquifer that's closest to the land surface, uh, the upper glacial, was formed approximately 20 to 25,000 years ago by the movement of glaciers that covered Long Island at that time. Beneath the uh, upper glacial is the Magathy Aquifer. Now that's uh, by far the largest of our aquifers and the one that we use the most. Directly beneath the Magathy is the Raritan Clay Layer. And beneath that is the Lloyd Aquifer, which is hardly used for drinking water purposes at all at the current time. And that's due to a moratorium uh, set in place by New York State. The Magathy and Lloyd aquifers were formed approximately 65 million years ago in an environment dominated by streams and coalescing deltas. Uh, the precipitation portion of the water cycle constantly replenishes the aquifer system. So when SCWA draws water out of the aquifers, approximately 70 billion gallons per year, our groundwater supply is not depleted. So Ty, more water replen is replenished in the aquifer annually than is taken out? Approximately 800 billion gallons comes into the Long Island system. Half of that runs off, so that's about 400 billion gallons that, that infiltrates into the aquifer. About 200 billion gallons collectively is used on Long Island, so more water is coming in than coming out. And how does our unique aquifer system differ uh, from other water suppliers? Well, uh, for Suffolk County Water Authority, we derive all of our water, 100% from the vast groundwater supply. Uh, many other water suppliers and municipalities, they draw their water from surface waters. For instance, uh, New York City uh, it tunnels its water from upstate surface reservoirs. Across the country, uh, water from surface waters such as lakes, rivers, streams, and wetlands at times are used for this purpose. Is the quality of raw water roughly the same? We're actually pretty lucky in that regard. It's easier for contaminants from runoff and other sources to reach surface waters than groundwater, since 
naturally occurring clays and sediments underground can act as natural filters. That is not to say that contaminants don't reach groundwater sources, as they certainly do, but the protective layers of the sediment can certainly help in uh, keeping the groundwater clean. Also, while groundwater tends to have fewer contaminants, it has a naturally occurring mineral content. We do, however, add hydrated lime to the water supply to harden the water before it goes to our customers. Wow, that's a lot to absorb, uh, no pun intended. Thank you, Ty. Thanks for having me. Let's take a quick water break. Our topic, what Long Islanders know about where their water comes from. Our correspondent, Seth Wallach, hits the streets to find out. Hey Jeff, I'm out here in Patchogue and we're gonna see if people know where their water comes from. No, I have no idea. No idea. I believe it comes down a little bit underground from upstate New York. It kind of filters through the ground. Do you know where our water comes from? Uh, I believe it comes from our water table. Uh, water comes from the, a well? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's all I know. Uh, does it come from the city? Like here or? Anywhere in Suffolk County. Uh, no idea. Do you know where your, your water comes from? Out of the taps. Out of the taps? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Our water comes from the aquifer. It comes from under our feet. All right, so we may have cheated on that last one. That was Suffolk County legislator Rob Calarco. So what we're asking people is, where does our water come from? Our water comes from down in the ground at the water table. Where does our water come from? Oh, um, something to do with the aquifer uh, at wells that take it out of the aquifer or something of that nature. I'm not 100% sure. How does it get to my tap? Yeah, at home, I, yeah. Well, I have public water, so it must come from a water main that comes near my house and goes up, up into my, um, you know, that's how it is, a water main. Well, there you have it. It seems we've got a bit of work to do to educate our customers. Let's get back to the program. Jeff? Thanks, Seth. We've certainly got our work cut out for us. Like many parts of the country after World War II, suburbia sprouted on Long Island, and Suffolk County's population would grow exponentially over the next two decades, skyrocketing from 276,000 in 1950 to 1.1 million by 1970. It was clear to leaders at the time that a modern, state-of-the-art public water company was needed to serve this growing population and ensure everyone had access to safe and reliable drinking water. Here to discuss these future challenges and other topics is Patrick Halpin, a former Suffolk County executive who is chairman of the Suffolk County Water Authority for the last two years and a board member for more than a decade. Patrick. You know this water authority in Suffolk County as well as anyone. Can you talk a bit about how the Suffolk County Water Authority was formed and why it is needed? Well, it's a good time to talk about our beginning because we're about to celebrate a major milestone. The Suffolk County Water Authority began supplying high quality drinking water to our customers 70 years ago this coming June after acquiring through condemnation the South Bay Consolidated Water Company. Our history, though, actually began a bit earlier. In 1934, the New York State Legislature, in keeping with the New Deal era, actually a lot of the New Deal projects and plans and laws came from New York State, created a new law permitting counties to create local water authorities operating essentially as nonprofits. The Suffolk County Board of Supervisors acted quickly to create such an authority, but concerns over cost and fear that local water might be exported to Nassau County and then end up in New York City caused the board to backtrack and quickly rescind the authorization. Several years of legal battles ensued. But in 1937, the Board of Supervisors ultimately reversed their position again, and the Suffolk County Water Authority was officially created. And a powerful local political figure, W. Kingsland Macy, was named its first chairman. Back then, nothing happened in Suffolk County. 
without the blessing of W. Kingsland Macy. Much of the late 30s and 40s was spent guarding against temps to raid Suffolk's water supplies, leading Macy to brag that the water supply being appraised at four times the assessed value of the real estate above the ground. Water was that valuable back then. But the Water Authority finally began serving customers in 1951. So at the beginning, we had about 21,000 customers serving communities primarily on the south shore of Long Island. That's right, Jeff. We acquired numerous water districts from all over Suffolk County throughout the years, established management agreements with others, and we sell wholesale water to water districts such as St. James and Smithtown as well. Uh, today, we have nearly 400,000 customer accounts serving, as you noted earlier, over 1.2 million Suffolk residents, and that number grows even more in the summer. Having that kind of size has served our customers well, and we're able to purchase supplies at bulk, thereby saving a lot of money. We have our own fully staffed, state-of-the-art water testing laboratory, which is really important given that our groundwater quality challenges are real, and we get all of our water from beneath our feet. The Water Authority provides safe, potable drinking water to about 85% of the population of Suffolk County. Those who aren't served, as you mentioned, may be part of a municipal water district. Uh, but there are still uh, thousands of others that are on private drinking water wells, primarily on the east end of our service territory. What do you say to those folks who uh, may have uh, a private well that may be impacted by contamination? How do we connect them? It's a huge priority. It's something we take very seriously. After all, there's nothing more important than having safe drinking water. The Water Authority has acted very quickly to respond to the needs of residents on private wells, whose wells have been contaminated by PFAS and PFA in Yapank, East Quag, West Hampton, and perhaps most notably in Wainscott. We quickly mobilize to either hook residents up to existing water mains or install new water mains. In the case of Wainscott, we installed over 45,000 feet of new water main in partnership with East Hampton in record time. Let's talk a little bit about our infrastructure. Uh, I think we have almost 6,000 miles of water main. We always say that's enough water main to get from New York City to Siberia. I mean, that's a tremendous amount of water main. We have elevated storage tanks. We have ground storage tanks. There's a lot of assets. Um, and the Water Authority is, as you mentioned earlier, in operation since the 1950s, providing drinking water. Um, so there's a cost that comes with the aged infrastructure. How are we addressing that with our capital plan? We have a proactive water main replacement program because we're always looking to do more. As I mentioned before, we acquired old water companies. And one of the things that we did in acquiring them was to acquire water mains, in some cases, that have been used for 100 years, and they have approached the end of their useful life. The good news is virtually every time we replace old, undersized cast iron pipes, we're replacing them with ductile iron pipes. Ductile iron pipes are extremely resistant to breaking, and they say they'll last well over 100 years. There's never been an instance when we've had superstorms, blizzards, hurricanes, where we haven't been able to supply drinking water to the residents of, our, of Suffolk County. That's right. So they may not have electricity, which is a tremendous inconvenience, but if they don't have water, then people are at risk. We, we, can, go, we can go for a while without food, uh, but we can't go without water. Thank you, Patrick, for your historical perspective and your commitment to the future. Jeff, the way I think about being chairman of the Water Authority is it's all about the future. Our job right now is to make sure that 70 years from now, the Water Authority is still considered the best-run public water authority in America.
I want to thank you for listening to the first edition of our podcast. Each month, What About Water will seek to offer enlightening information for our customers and the general public about a specific topic pertaining to the quality and quantity of our drinking water and other relevant and interesting topics concerning the public water supply. What About Water is produced by Jeff Sabo, Tim Motes, and Seth Wallach. Today's episode was developed by Tim Motes and was engineered and edited by Seth Wallach with additional research provided by Debbie Pfeiffer and Rick Brand. If you enjoyed What About Water, be sure to rate us and leave a review. Help spread the word by telling a friend and following the Suffolk County Water Authority on Facebook and Twitter. You can find What About Water on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. I hope you'll join us for the next edition of What About Water next month when we'll focus on a topic that has been on everyone's mind, emerging threats to our drinking water supply, and what we here at SCWA are doing to address those threats. Until next time, I'm Jeff Sabo.